Hey guys, it's Natalie and I just got back from visiting my best friend McKenna where we spent 48 hours in New York City and hit up six different secondhand shops in addition to doing other touristy things as well. We did so much planning before our trip to figure out which stores would be worth a trip and I just got finished going through all our thrifting adventure footage so I want to go over which stores were worth a trip and which were overhyped. We split our trip into two parts, the first being near Grand Central Station in Manhattan, specifically Chelsea, and the second being Brooklyn. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do with this video. This is gonna be part one and cover Manhattan. Stay tuned for part two, which will cover Brooklyn, but let's get into it with Manhattan. Our very first stop in New York City was 2nd Street. This is a very well-known luxury buy-sell trade store. We went to the one in Chelsea. It was closest to Grand Central. Right when you walk in, you're just hit with all of these glass cases holding luxury items. It's so overwhelming, but if you go to the back, they do have items like more similar to Buffalo Exchange, Plato's Closet, you know, just elevated mall brands. But we stayed up in the front with the designer items because that's what we came for to look at. And look at these Louboutins. They are really nice. Um, $200, they retail for $700. I feel like that's a really fair price. Some Balenciagas, really just amazing. Like this is a good deal. It was like new, a Coach Tabby bag. That retails for $450, a Prada backpack. This was really cute. I feel like if we would have gone here later in the trip, we may have splurged and bought a designer bag. I know that's kind of on my like thrift list is to get a nice designer bag, but I haven't pulled the trigger on one yet, but soon, soon. This Gucci bag was so cute. We were really tempted to buy that one. It was adorable. That is just like a shaving bag but still cool. Oh, this Celine bag was actually a pretty good deal. Celine's a really expensive. I honestly had no idea. I don't think I'm that into designer, but this was just such an experience. This Pauline bag kind of was expensive. $400. They retail for $500. I do think that's a little up there. They had gorgeous wallets in the cases. I actually did not ask them to pull anything out of the case, but they were fun to look through. Um, look at these. Like it was just, it was an experience. They just had so much to get through. This is again, some of that like more normal buy, sell, trade items. This is where it got weird. So the Balmain dress, 350, you're like, okay, that dress retails for over a thousand, but look at this, holes, and then there's oil stains on it. Who is gonna spend $350 on a dress with that much damage that's kind of irreparable? Same with this Christian Dior jacket. Like it is literally chewed. It looks like an animal mauled it. And they still want $230? This was just a weird boot. I'd never heard of the Y Project and they literally came all the way up like past your hips. I don't even know how they worked. To keep my opinion on each store consistent, I do wanna rate each store on three things, starting with variety and then price and then quality. So for second straight variety, I gotta give it to them, a nine out of 10. They had designer up front and then a whole Plato's Closet Buffalo Exchange level in the back. Like it was impressive the amount of variety they had in such a small space. Now price. I feel like they really hit the mark on some of the designer pieces, but on some things, it was just so extreme. Like some of the prices were so close to retail. Some of the prices were just extremely high for items that were damaged. And even some of the items that were in the Plato's closet level area were priced pretty high. So for price, I'm going to give them a 6.5. I feel like where they did well, they did well, but some areas were just so out there with pricing like i can't i can't rate it that great and then quality was pretty much the same like where they did it really well they had amazing quality pieces but then there were just some really surprise items that you were just like hmm why would a luxury secondhand shop have items like this out you know you kind of question that so on quality, I'm gonna give them a seven out of 10. So all in all, nine out of 10 for a variety, price 6.5 out of 10, and quality seven out of 10. On to the next stop. 
This was the Buffalo Exchange in Chelsea. It was literally one minute away from 2nd Street, so it made so much sense to come here next. And let me tell you, this store was huge. You could tell from the outside, and then once you walk inside, it was impressive. It's bigger than the stores here in Texas, which is surprising because I feel like everything in New York is miniature. The one thing I do have to say is that the racks were not laid out the best. When you're going through them, it felt kind of claustrophobic, but they did have a surprising amount of men's items and everything was in good condition. Usually the men's section at secondhand stores is like a fourth, maybe a half the size of the women's section and the items are just not as quality, but these were in pretty good condition. We headed over to the jeans section. I saw some Prada jeans. I feel like I was still in the designer mindset coming from Second Street, but they just weren't that impressive. Um, and then McKenna found some Abercrombie and Fitch jeans. In the purse section, it was just okay. There was a lot of fast fashion, like Amazon bags, Shein, um, Princess Polly. It just wasn't the most quality material. Like, I don't care about brands, but I do like to see items that are just like nice, like like leather or just, you know, quality bags, not so much fast fashion. And I did feel like it was a lot of fast fashion in the bag department. I do have to say the shoe department was great. It was huge. They had such cute items. I adored these Carl Lagerfeld lug sole loafers. If they would have just been like a half size bigger, I totally would have gotten them, but they were just kind of hurting my toes. I thought these Kelsey Dagger clogs were amazing. And they had some really nice quality shoes like these fry boots. The shoes were great. I do have to give them to it on that. Um, and then I saw this Ghani t-shirt. I kind of regret not getting it. It actually fit me really well and made a really cute outfit, but I left it behind. I don't know why. And then this Chanel dress was adorable. It was fake. They disclosed that on the tag that it was not authentic, but it was adorable. If it would have been a little bit longer, I feel like it would have been such a cute dress for summer. Now for my thoughts on this Buffalo exchange. I feel like it had a lot of potential, which was the disappointing part. It was huge. Like the store was just massive, but the finds were unimpressive. Like if I'm being honest, it was just, it was not all that, right? Um, so as far as variety goes, six out of 10, pretty much everything there was fast fashion, especially on the clothing racks. Like I didn't even show off any of the dresses because it was mainly the items that Buffalo Exchange buys to sell at their store. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's like those boutique items that you see like multiple of. And I just think that's so disappointing. Like I don't go to secondhand stores to buy the same thing that everyone else has. Like I go to secondhand stores to find unique, fun, cool items, right? Like I don't want the stuff that you guys just buy in from like a department store. Lame. Six out of 10. Price not bad honestly i mean their price was pretty normal standard buffalo exchange prices like seven out of ten like typical like not bad quality i mean they didn't really have anything that was stained or you know tattered out so i mean their quality was fine but it just wasn't that impressive of items like it was fast fashion that was out you know and fast fashion is never that quality i do understand selling it because it's trendy like i think that all buy sell trade stores should incorporate it but then they should also have the focus of having like quality items as well um so on quality seven out of ten all in all just meh like it wasn't a great experience i really had high hopes for it especially when we were walking by i was like this store is huge and i've seen some people get really great items from there on youtube so maybe it was just an off time but i i wasn't impressed with it i gotta be honest the next stop was the Goodwill on West 25th Street. It was literally two minutes away from the Buffalo Exchange. It made so much sense to go there and we saw a lot of good things about it online. But at this point, my camera and my phone had died because i have been shooting so much footage. So I'm gonna let McKenna's short form video that was uploaded on Instagram and TikTok speak for this Goodwill and then I will give you my review on it. I've been dying to go thrifting in New York City, and so here is my realistic Goodwill experience, 
Everything at the front is wildly expensive. I'm talking like $20 to $40 range, and it's not even that great. These Golden Goose shoes were behind the counter. I'm pretty sure they're authentic, and they were $100, so not too bad, but they were pretty shredded. Um, this was at the front, $19.99 for a Zara bag. These shoes, I don't know what was going on. These are all like $29.99, like why? Also fit check, I just love this little jacket. Um, but then you go to the back, and things drastically change. I'm pretty sure all these bikinis are like $9.99. Those are great prices. If you know these brands, they're so good. I was actually really happy that we stopped here. I ended up finding so many gems. The ones I'm showing you right now were under $7.99 and you just can't beat that. So yeah, some of the prices sucked, but it's just like any other Goodwill where there's good and bad. So as far as this Goodwill on West 25th Street goes, I feel like it was a really good Goodwill. I mean, variety, eight out of 10. Like it was impressive the amount of stuff that they had. They had really great menswear. They had really great dresses. They had swimwear i was surprised we were there and they had so much swim and honestly like are there even pools in new york city like i don't know but an impressive amount of swimwear and just so so many gems i will say the stuff up front was kind of whack but whatever pricing okay up front five out of ten like awful pricing up front i mean it made no sense it was like grandma's knit sweater 30 bucks why but then you went to the back and everything was like $10 or less, which is pretty equivalent to the Goodwill pricing here in Texas and other, you know, states. So as far as the in the back pricing goes on clothing, 8 out of 10. The shoe pricing was also whack, but clothing pricing, not bad. Quality, I have to say this was the most quality Goodwill I've ever walked into. And I'm talking it's more quality than Goodwill boutique stores. It was like they actually stain inspected the items before they put them out. It was mind blowing. I just was so impressed. Everything was clean and nice. It looks like they almost steamed the items. I know they didn't, but it almost looked like that. Like it was very, very, very presentable. So the quality was like amazing. I don't know. I thought it was a really impressive Goodwill. Like overall eight out of 10, one of my favorite stops of the day. I found some really cool items. I know I didn't get to show them off, but I found two brand new free people tank tops and then a really beautiful anthropology long gown. It was cool. I mean, I, I would definitely go back there again. Like that was a good stop in the Chelsea Manhattan area. That's a wrap on part one of our New York City thrifting adventures. I would say the clear winner for Manhattan was the Goodwill on West 25th Street. Second place would be Second Street. That really was such a fun stop. I was just a bit unprepared and kind of taken back by the price tags, but in hindsight, they really did have competitive pricing for designer pieces. Next time I go to a store like that, I just want to feel ready to potentially pull the plug on a designer bag if I see one I really like. And third place would go to Buffalo Exchange. If I had a chance to redo this day, the only thing I would change would be the order. I would go to Goodwill, then Second Street, then Buffalo Exchange. If I had time, the great thing about these stores is that they were all so close together. I'm talking just a few minutes walking distance. So it would be so easy to just make that adjustment to your trip. I had so much fun in Manhattan, and I gotta be honest, I had even more fun in Brooklyn. I am so excited to share part two with y'all. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. If you're into thrifty content, be sure to check out my best friend McKenna on social media. Her Instagram is all things pink honey, and you can now find her on YouTube. I'll link her channel down below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I cannot wait to be back here with y'all soon. Bye.